Welcome to Gardening with Daddy Pete. Let's join our host, Melvin York. Well, greetings, everyone. This is Melvin York, and you're listening to Gardening with Daddy Pete. We do like to thank each and every one of you for tuning in. Some of the questions I've got this week, and I do appreciate those. And so we'll try to go over just a few of those today on our podcast here. If you're a first-time listener, you can go to our website, which is www.daddypeets.com. Dot com And when you get there, you can look around our page a little bit, make yourself familiar with it. You can see a place to ask questions or leave a comment. We do answer those questions and we will return any comments you have. We'd love to hear. We'll use them in our podcast. Also, while you're there, you will find out that you can look at each and every one of our different products we make to help you in your gardening, your landscape, and all your needs as far as gardening goes or Even if it's pots, if it's raised beds, if it's your perennial beds, flower beds, even if you're doing row gardening, we do have a product to help you between our mixes, our mulches, and our amendments. So while you're there, take time to look at each and every one of our products. There's a good description there. And again, if you have any questions, go back, hit that Ask a Question button, and we will get back to you. Our motto at Daddy Pete's is we help you grow, and that's exactly what we intend to do. So today, I thought we would just have some random talk going on from some of the questions that I've been asked this week. One's very important, and I'm glad that this question came up, and it's about different varieties of vegetables. And we can even expand that on into fruits and some of your berry bushes. So we'll do that here today, too. Again, I want to remind you, if you're a first-time gardener or if you're a seasoned gardener, here it is, starting the last day of February. We're getting ready to start in March. Get that journal. Write down everything you've done this year, the varieties that you've bought, what you've bought the seeds that you bought, when have you planted them, what transplant. Let's keep up with the weather, and we'll see how it affects everything. And by keeping up with the weather, I do mean your temperatures, precipitation, and the lack of it. Temperatures are a big thing also. So keep that in mind as you're going through so we can see how the harvest works, how your plants fared, and did they have an optimum growth, or are they stunted, or are they medium And these are things you can do, and we can find out what's going on. Was it the variety? Was it the weather? Was it lack of fertilization? These are the questions you can ask if you do have a problem. Again, you can go back to the website, take a picture, send it to us, send the question in with a description, and we'll take care of you there. One thing you need to always be mindful of if you're doing raised beds or any type of road gardening, make sure you do start out with a soil sample. And when you send that soil sample in, it will also have a place on there for the crops that you're growing. And we want to make sure that you do fill that out. So when that soil is tested, it can come back with the recommendations. Do you need the lime? Is the pH fine for that? Is the pH too high? Maybe you're going to plant an area of blueberry bushes and it comes back and your pH is 6.5. Too high for blueberry bushes. Blueberry bushes like a pH of 4.5 to 5, for instance. So then you're going to have to amend that soil with something to bring the pH down, which would, well, one avenue would be on horticultural sulfur. You could do that. It would tell you the amount of that to add to your soil for a thousand square feet and to bring that pH down. I would do that if it was me and go ahead and plant, take another soil sample, send it off and make sure that that did adjust that pH of that soil where you want it for those blueberries. In mulching, I always like to use pine straw or pine bark. That helps keep the pH low. Hardwood mulch seems to tend to raise your pH just a little, so keep that in mind also. Daddy Peace, we've got a great mulch for those blueberry bushes, for your raspberries, basically even for your perennials, your bulb beds, and it's called our soil enhancer. It is an aged pine bark fine that is, and what they do, they vary between about a half an inch to three quarters to and you may find some one inch flakes in there too of pine bark now that is an ideal situation for all the beds that i've just talked about anyway these are things that you want to do get those soil tests made now one question i had this week was about varieties do i need a different vegetable variety for things that i may be doing different now let me give you an example let's start out with cucumbers cucumbers is a big one 
first, we need to buy the plant for what we intend to do with them. Right off the hand, there's a cucumber called Market More. It's a medium-sized green cucumber on the dark green side. It's a good pickling cucumber. You can start pickling it from half growth to all the way just about full growth. Or if you want to let it come on out into full growth, it makes a great slicing cucumber. But Okay, I'm not going to do any canning, Melvin. So here's what we're going to do. So we're going to look at something like the burpless or burpees hybrid is a good slicing cucumber. And there's more. And I'm just giving you an example of one or the other. But you'll find all this information on the back of the seed or you should find it on the plant. Now, on the little tag when you buy the transplants. If it doesn't have a tag, get the name of it before you buy it. If you've got your phone with you, go to the uh, website where you can look up just that name on uh, your phone and it'll give you the information. If not, you can always go to our North Carolina Extension page. If you live in Virginia, again, Virginia Extension, South Carolina, go to Clemson, so forth and so on. Tennessee, UT's got a page on it. So you can go to each one of your state run extension services. They'll have back sheets on each and every vegetable there. And not only will it tell you what the vegetable is good for, it will give you the pH, optimal pH, fertilization. It will let you know how long it lasts, maturity during the summer. Is it the sun hardy? Does it need partial sun? All these facts will be there. And most of this you will find on that tag, enough to probably answer your questions. Also look for that hardiness zone or USDA hardiness zone. Is that plant hardy in your area? So is it a shade tolerant, sun tolerant plant? Again, those markings should be on there. So that's what we want to do. Let's just take green beans, for example. Some green beans are good to pick fresh and go on. Maybe they don't. When they grow, they get a little on the tough side. Some doesn't freeze well. Some doesn't can well. Some doesn't dry well. And those are three different ways that we can preserve green beans. Maybe you're just wanting them for a fresh pick, and you're going to pick them young and tender. And then that right there still makes a difference. What size green beans do you want? Are they climbing? Okay, do you need to stake them out so they climb? Are they a bush variety? These are things you need to be looking at on the tags of the vegetable seed or plants that you're putting in your gardens or raised beds or pots. Now, I tried this several years back. I took a seven-gallon nursery pot, filled it up with some Daddy peat, and I actually, at the time, used potting mix. I put in about 12 or 14 of the green bean seeds and let them kind of grow wild. I actually put a tomato cage inside the pot, upside down, and let them grow, and it was a wire cone type cage, and let them grow up through there. I had green beans everywhere, and you know what? When it Came time for frost, grabbed the pot, took it inside the barn where frost couldn't get it. And usually the first frost of the season's only for a day or so. And then we have what we call the end of the summer come back, brought it back out, and we're still getting beans off of it on up into November. So these are just a few things you can do. You've got to think outside the box when you're gardening because things will. We are lucky here in the Piedmont of North Carolina. One thing that we can do is grow things for 10, 12 months a year. And when I said 12 months, you go, well, now, wait a minute. Now we're going to be here in December. We're going to be in January. Yes, we can grow some of the crops like that, and we may have to put them in a pot. Bring them in just for a little bit, and I'm talking about lettuces, maybe radishes. These are things of the salad variety, and we can plant those twice a year. So we want to look at these varieties. Are they cold hard? Some lettuce germinates at 35 degrees, so you can saw it, and the temperature gets like that. Again, people growing potatoes. That's something that you can plant earlier into the season and grow on. You want them, and usually they're ready to be taken up out of the garden by the 4th of July. We always use the potatoes and then we'd go back with another crop. Most of the times it would be green beans or either corn. We would go back behind those rows of potatoes and then before frost, we would have another. Another thing to look at on your varieties and on your pack, how long until maturity? So there will be some things. It's just like, let me give you an example. Sweet corn may mature in 55 to 65 days. For field corn, and like we grow for feed for the cows, some of them is 90 days, some of them is 100 days, some of them is 110, so it's even 120 days. So, And there is a different length on 
different variety vegetables when they become ready to harvest. You'll see that different in cantaloupes. You'll see it different in green beans. You'll see it in tomatoes. You'll see it in cucumbers. Squash, zucchini, again, just about every variety of vegetables has a different maturity date on when you can pick them. What's really nice is if you get two varieties that you like, and make sure now if these are heirlooms, you don't get them too close where they do some mixing now because you want to save your seed and you do want to keep it pure. But again, with two different types of corn and you plant early corn, say 60 day maturity on your smaller stall, really early sweet corn, but maybe you do want to plant some of the old time Indian corn. You want to plant some of the, the old time field corn. A lot of people like to eat it or they keep it to where they can make meal out of it. That matures later on up into the 85, 90 day. So those two will not mix because pollination will be done with the one day earlier when the next one comes on if they are planted at the same time. Now, that brings us to another thing. Do we want to keep a fresh crop of, say, green beans growing uh, year-round? Well, we plant our early one. Then about three to four weeks later, go ahead and plant that second crop. That way you have a hardy crop. When one is finally going out, the next crop is coming in. And with green beans, you can probably do that if you have the space as many as three times. So keep those about three to four weeks apart. Same thing if you were going to do, well, let me give you a good example of another one that you could do that with. And that would be maybe peas. I don't know how many of you do field peas, but you can do that. You can back them up and you can move those two to three weeks apart. Cucumbers, use a different variety. Some cucumbers that we do, we actually grow out on the ground. They bind out and we pick them. And But when the sun gets too hot, it starts scorching the leaves. And then we usually lose some of those. But there are varieties now that actually the vine bunches like. Some that will, if you build a trellis, that same variety will go up. It, and the sun doesn't bother the leaves near as bad. And with ample water on the bottom of the plant, around the base and the roots, you can have cucumbers three to four weeks long. Longer. So this is just some of the ideas that you can do in gardening. Always make sure, though, that you do look at the days to maturity on that. Look and see, is it full sun? Is it sun hardy? Does it take partial shade? Let us will bolt early. Spinach will bolt early. All of these early garden crops will bolt early if they're in full sun and they get the heat. A lettuce bed will work well. And if you plant in the early spring before all the leaves come out, if it's sitting in the bed like that, and then by the time the leaves put on, it's shaded over the area and you will actually see yourself getting two to three more weeks of fresh lettuce or radishes, whether it be turnips, it be greens, spinach, will be longer before it starts to bolt or go to seed. Same terminology and just because of where you put it. But you've looked on the back of that pack or you've looked on that label, you've looked it up on the extension service, you do know what that plant's capable of and when it will start its cycle to make seed. Just to give you a an example of things. Again, if you have that journal, you can write these down. What location? Did I choose a good location? Would it have been better? Would the shade have been better if I would have moved it over? Did I put it in a place for something that loves sun and got too much shade? Do you make a difference if it's morning sun or evening sun? Yes, it makes a big difference. Some plants will thrive well on morning sun and then afternoon sun in the summertime is a lot hotter. We all know that. And plants don't tend to do as well if they're not a full sun plant. So some of the examples of a full sun plant would be the corn. Corn loves full sun. Believe it or not, tomatoes do too, but you want to keep those in full sun, but you want to make sure they got a good water supply, an evil water supply. We've talked about that before. You can go back on our podcast, listen on how to prepare that hole, set the plant, how to mulch it, how to stake it, how to prune it. And that's when you get optimum success with your tomatoes and your peppers from doing those few things that we have on our podcast on growing tomatoes. So if you're starting out this year or you've had problems in the past, just click on that. Listen to that again when you get done. If you have any questions, please give us a comment or a question on our line. Leave me a number and email address. I'll be more than glad to get back to you. And I say this every time people said, well, Melvin, do you really answer all the questions? I absolutely do. Yes, that's what we do. Our biggest thing is at Daddy Peach, we've been around since 1907, and we do intend to keep our motto going. And it's kind of what we live by. It's 
we help you grow. And that's exactly what we intend to do, given the chance. We do want you to be successful. That's why we put all the hard work and effort into our mixes and our amendments and our mulches that we provide you with something that works and that is the same year after year. Are you bothering us with your questions? <laughs> Absolutely not. We love to hear your success. The only thing we do ask you to do that when you've tried our products and you do that, you know, drop that on the comment section. Let us know that you've done good. If you got pics you want to share, Lord, we'd love to have them. Yes, we want to hear about your success. I've said before, if you've had problems, we want to hear about that too. So we can help you determine, was it a plant? Was it a variety? Was it temperature? Was it something else? Was it a disease? Was it insects? These are the things that we will help you. Was it deer? Deer eat a lot of plants. Was it squirrel? Squirrel eat a lot of plants. So we have different things going on all the time. But gardening is not a mystery. It just takes a little bit of experience. And that's what we like to do here is for each and every one to share their experiences. Now, when we've got a topic like we did today, I'm sure some of y'all got some ideas, some things you've done that we could share with our listeners. And we'd love to help them along because this is what this is all about. Again, you know, I'm a stickler for the journal, and we do love you visiting our website, seeing that. And I do want to hear about how your gardening's doing. So if you have any questions, just give us a ring. Short session tonight, but these were one of the questions that I did have was about varieties and the difference of how you use them. Same thing with fruit trees. You have uh, varieties of apples that put on in the spring. You have some in the summer. You have some in the fall. You have some that saves better than the other. Some are tart for baking. Some are sweeter for eating. Some of the apples save longer than the other in cool places. Same thing that you got with peaches. Peaches come on at different times. Blueberries is known to come on at different times. If you have the right knowledge, and know which bushes to plant, which is easy enough to, to figure out. Just by going to the extension page, you can actually have blueberries coming in about June and different varieties. And by the time they get done, they'll be going out about September. So that gives you a good example. With just a couple bushes, you could be keeping blueberries going all the way through. And that's just one fruit we're talking about. You can do that with vegetables. You can do that with herbs. You can do that with berries. You can do that with fruits. So just to give you a hint, Get your curiosity kind of honed in and get you looking around and check those varieties. Check the maturity dates. And that way, the worst thing you can do is get a fresh mess of green beans. You get used to eating them a couple times a week. And then two weeks later or three weeks later, they're done. And then, well, I'll go plant some more. Well, no, you've got to wait that whole run again. But if you planned ahead, if you kept that journal and kept the three weeks, four weeks apart planning, once those are done, you can grab those, dry those, let them save seed off of them, and you can commence eating fresh green beans right on, just like nothing ever stopped. You're just moving over a couple rows. And then when those get done, your last one's coming in. And that way, if you want to do some canning all along, you can do that. You can have fresh green beans all along. And green beans is only one of the things we talk about. You can do that with corn and other. So just to give you an idea, but check those tags, get your information on the varieties that you're doing, see which one you like, and you know. I'm always said this, if you have the space where you're doing the pots and using heirlooms, separate them out, but try a couple of different varieties. See which one you like the most. If nothing else, give us some friends. Maybe you're in a garden club and they say, well, I like a Cherokee purple tomato. Well, maybe your friend down the road likes a beefsteak. Maybe y'all could share and then you can decide which variety you like the best. Write that down in your journal when you get ready to plant next year. You'll know which one you want to buy. All right. Well, it's been fun and certainly do appreciate each and every one of you listening go to our website daddypeach.com look around there you know we've been hanging out since about 1907 so we're a century plus farm and you know we enjoy what we do it's a lot of hard work and it's you know seven days a week it's uh 30 days a month, 12 months a year. But we enjoy what we do. And another thing we enjoy is hearing from you and helping you grow here at Daddy Pete Farms. Again, thank you so much. And tomorrow is the first day of March. So let's get in those gardens. If it's raining a little bit, we can go the next day. Get everything ready for Saturday because tomorrow's Friday, first day of March. And if it is raining, like they're calling on here, go out and get whatever else that you need. Check those tags, buy that journal, get it started, and you'll be ready for planning all next week. Well, until next time, you've been listening to Gardening with Daddy Pete, and I'm your host, Melvin York. Happy gardening. 
Thank you for joining today's Gardening with Daddy Pete. You can check out our website at daddypeets.com for additional gardening tips and our podcast at gardeningwithdaddypete.podbean.com. You can also join us on Amazon, Apple, or Spotify.